Okay, this is going to be a little demonstration of how to um, get a photo with uh, a little haze around it. I'm opening up this photo, which I was sent, um, because it's already got a black background, but um, the photo isn't actually separated from the background. The first thing I'll use is the magic wand tool. I'll go and click on the black background, and that's going to... Um, mask everything that's black for me. Um, I didn't really like how much that did, so I'm going to shrink down the tolerance here <coughs> and redo it. Um, here's the remove mask button. So I'm going to try that again. There we go. So now that it's the way that I want it to be, um, I'm actually going to invert that mask and go to Object, Create, Cut Selection. And if we look over here in the objects docker, what that did is it created an object and then left the background. I'm going to uh, delete that background. Now I've got just my object. <coughs> then I'm going to take the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle. So now I've got a black object and my lady object. The black object I can either hit shift page down to throw it to the back or I can just drag it down and it'll change the sequence there. So now that we've got her, um, <coughs> I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and I really don't like <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, how harsh, how harsh these edges are. So what I'll take is the eraser tool and if you hold down shift while you click you can drag your mouse up or down and that will make the uh, size of your nib go up or down. So I'm going to just do it here about a 30 maybe. Transparency I'm going to take all the way up to um, sorry about 75. This, this is about right. Feather, I'll feather it uh, to 100. <coughs> And so as we start erasing here, I'm going to make this smaller. You'll see how it softens the edges here. And because we're erasing, um, and because this is the lady's hair, basically what I want to do is I want to fade this out, <laughs> but make it faded to the point that it looks like wisps of hair. <coughs> Um, this is obviously done a little bit easier if you're using a uh, a graphics tablet, but just to show that it can be done with a mouse, I'm going to go ahead and do it here with a mouse. And so all we're going to do is just go and start erasing things back here so that we don't have such a harsh edge along the hair. Now those two settings that we changed, the transparency and the uh, feather, what those do is the transparency, depending on how transparent your brush is, um, it's only going to take out a certain amount of what you're drawing. Um, if I do a really big one here, we can 
go ahead and click on it. You see how it's really, really light right there? If I do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. You know, it's going to get darker and darker every time. But because of the transparency, that's how it looks. If we were to change this transparency to zero and do that again, one click, you can see how dark it goes just with one a single click. Now the feathering is the same thing. <coughs> the feather determines how much fading it is from the center to the edges. Um, where, I, where I'm doing 100 now, if I were to switch that down to zero, now this is just going to simply be uh, a black circle. The nib shape here, as you change these, um, will reflect that a little bit. So say we went up to 25, you can see that it gets a little bit um, more soft around the edges there. If I jump this up to 100, you can see now how how it has affected that nib shape. <coughs> um, <coughs> so now you can see that there. I'm just going to undo these. <coughs> But in, by changing the transparency, it doesn't make it as harsh of a change. And that's kind of what we're looking for there. If you go too transparent, if we were to go to 99, you wouldn't really see anything happen because it's completely transparent, so you don't notice it. Anyway, that was just to show you how those work. If, as you go over it, if if you think that it's you know not quite erased enough or dark enough, all you do is you just go back over it again to get it to fade out even more. Now being, uh, you know, up against the black background, I, you don't really see the harshness of the line as much, but if you were to put the white up against it, um, behind it, let's go ahead and grab some white here. Um, <coughs> going to create a new object, and that way it's going to be between her and the black. And I'm just going to draw white in here. If we draw the white, you can see how harsh that that line is now, as opposed to over here. <coughs> it's going to be not quite as harsh. <coughs> and also because because we're actually going to end up with a glow, um, we'll end up going back and erasing even more because as you can see we haven't done quite a good enough job erasing back here so we'll go back and erase more um, but when I do that then I'll usually drop the transparency down and just stay away from the inside sections because now we're just going to be erasing these outside pieces here The way that the the brushes work, whether it's an eraser or a brush when you're drawing, <coughs> as long as you have your button clicked down, 
um, that's going to however long you have that click down when you go to click undo it'll undo that entire stroke so unless you lift up your hand um, it'll be considered a single stroke so if I got all this far and then ended up screwing up and I had to undo that it's gonna go all the way back to the beginning <coughs> so if you want to um, be able to undo more precisely just go ahead and lift your finger off the button every so often so that it creates a new stroke for you that way when you're undoing you're going in you're going more incremental <coughs> depending on how fancy you want to go with this um, you can go in and, and, and zoom in with an even smaller stroke and really try to you know pull out hairs um, or you can go back in a little later with a brush draw those hairs back in, you know, kind of get wisps, um, but that, that just depends on how fine of detail you want to do when you do this. I would have to say that doing this with the mouse is uh, not the preferable way of doing it. It takes a lot more time, um, and it's just not, not as natural <coughs> when it comes to doing the, the drawing strokes. But, that's okay.
Okay. It's not perfect, but since this is just a demo, I'm not going to make it look perfect. So there's a couple things here now that we can do in order to make a glow. One, I already did. Um, you know, I went ahead and painted in white. <coughs> <coughs> and that was just a matter of painting here. Now if we wanted to, delete this, now we've just got her. <clears throat> so I'm going to make this object 3 the uh, um, active object by clicking on it. So if I click and just trace my way around, As you can see, I'm not I'm not way out here because I'm just trying to give it just a slight glow. Once again, the the amount of the, the the difference between the black and the white is going to be um, a combination of your feather and your transparency. If we were to go a bit more transparent here, <coughs> could even go a little larger. Then it would be a, a bit more subtle difference. There are tools as well, once you've got that created, if it's a little bit too dark, you can always go and adjust the brightness and the contrastity of that uh, haze. You can you know, bring down the brightness so that it's not as bright. <coughs> Maybe make it a bit more intense, make it you know, contrast more. If it was a bit too, too bright for you. I'll just reset it here to the way it was. We can drag that down so that it's not as bright. Yet yeah, has a bit more contrast. Those kind of things. Um, <coughs> so that's that's one way of doing it. We're going to go ahead and hide this one just so that we can't see that. We'll make a new object. Actually, we probably didn't need to, but we'll grab her. She's object one. And what we're going to do is. Um, Grab the drop shadow tool, okay, and then we're just going to choose a large glow, <coughs> and <coughs> once again you can play with the uh, transparency settings here, your feathering. Um, instead of large, let's do uh, medium, maybe. There we go. Or maybe even small. As you can see, just by changing the settings, you're going to get different results. And 
Now this this particular one, because it's a drop shadow, it's going to actually um, follow the path of the outline a bit more closely than if you were to do it by hand. Um, and the reason that it's getting this white spot up here is obviously because we didn't erase something. So we'll go and erase that. That way the drop shadow disappears. <coughs> now that you've got the drop shadow, um, Let's see how to do this here. Drop shadow. Okay. If you right click on the picture of her, go down to drop shadow, you can say split shadow. So now that shadow is its own piece. Okay. <coughs> um, depending on whether you like that or not, um, and there's, you know, that. I guess it gives kind of the sunbursty effect. We can uh, we can also play with that a little bit if we wanted. You know, maybe do a blur. Um, a Gaussian blur type thing. That'll smooth that out for you. <coughs> okay. Another thing that we could do, instead of doing a drop shadow, um, <coughs> is, let's see, I don't know, I think that's probably good. That gives you, that gives you two different ways. <laughs> so that's not bad, right? So, anyway, there you go. That's how I would do it. Now, some of this stuff, I'm, I'm just going to save this here. I'm going to save as... a... CPT file. Okay, I've loaded up Corel Draw here, so I'm just going to uh, import our CPT file into Corel Draw. And ungroup all the different pieces the the black I'll actually delete that because I'd rather have that as a vector so I will have the black as a vector send that to the back so now I've got my image and I've got my drop shadow um, but I'm gonna send this to the back as well just to show you that if we had this already cut out in uh, we could bring that into draw and then we could go and do the uh, Um, drop shadow here. Oops. Just gonna do the same thing, small glow. <coughs> change um, this is an inter this is interactive so you can change this and you can change the color here of uh, what you're fading to and from so if we were to drag one drop it into this box 
see how it's black there um, doesn't show up as much if we were to drag white over here then it's going to be even brighter um, and then that also depends on you know how much we slide this in and out how bright it's going to be <coughs> but as you can see the the, ac the drop shadow here in draw I actually prefer it to the way that it did it in uh, in photo paint um, you know th this one doesn't look like I have to do much of a fade to it so I'll go ahead and do the drop shadow that way and then I'm going to break the drop shadow group apart now I've got my shadow I've got my original and depending on what I'm doing here um, you know I can crop this down uh, drop shadow if you're going to move the nodes you know just moving them is it's like a rectangle so it'll curve the edges so what you have to do is you have to uh, convert that to curves once it's converted to curves you can drag these up <coughs> and that'll give you the harsh edge there or if you wanted to you could always go and take the transparency tool and apply a transparency um, to the bottom here and kind of fade that out same thing with the <coughs> with this however in order to uh, to edit this what you would have to do is convert it to a bitmap transparent background anti-aliased uh, grayscale bitmap then you can go and fade that out as well <coughs> which sometimes I like to do that too just to uh, you know make it so that it maybe isn't even going all the way down to the bottom but there's different tools there for doing that as well so if we click back on her change just a little bit here and there we go